I can see one of you is already sleeping. And that is the beginning of problems. <laughs> if you can only listen when I'm talking. Were you drunk last night? That's the beginning of the discipline. We cannot be talking to you and you are sleeping. Good enough, this induction training has come at a time when you have already tested the waters. And therefore, we suppose that we must have gathered some idea about the justice needs and the concerns of the people in your jurisdiction. Those needs or uh, concerns may be unique depending on where you are stationed. My expectation is that by now you have introspected and determined in your minds how you are going to administer justice, mind for the needs of aid or, or, or to either restore or enhance public confidence that the situation may invite. Your ships you serve in different communities. Now each community has its own problems or unique challenges. You will find that certain cases are more prevalent in the certain areas compared to others. Uh, when I was in Masaka as a, as a resident judge, I used to encounter so many cases of incest. And when I tried to find out why, uh, then they, some people around there, especially the lawyers, were telling me some of those cases as a result of people believing in me. You know, you go to which doctor and then the witch doctor says, gives you an impossibility. Say, sleep with your daughter if you want this party, after he has taken your money. And he thinks you are not going to do it, and you go ahead and do it. So those cases were common, but when I went to Barara, I never found there many of those cases. So you, and then in, in Masaka, I didn't found there cases of, especially in the area of Rakai, I think we had two cases in the court of cannibals. So those are unique situations. So you will find every, every press having its own unique challenges. Uh, uh, traditions, culture, you, you find in some, in some areas like those of you who decide in Karamoja, you find they have a very strong traditional system where they think after they have settled the matter, you are not supposed to, to interfere. So you need to learn some of those uh, unique circumstances as you, you, you maneuver in your areas of jurisdiction. There was a public outcry about corruption in the division, both actual and perceived. Their concern is that some British officers ask for bribes to give favorable decisions or orders. One of the areas where there has been immense public outcry is the issue of bail. There are many complaints that getting bail in some courts, especially at the magistrate's court level, is unthinkable without bail money in courts. First, the British officer and other actors in the justice chain. My Lord, the Honorable Chief Justice, you have on numerous occasions emphasized that justice in the judiciary is not for sale. It is therefore absurd that in this day and age, a judicial officer who is well paid and facilitated in millions of shillings can stoop so well to require of an impoverished court user to sell his or her own record or other little possession in order to pay his or her way out of the way or make any other favorable court decision or order in his or her favor. These and many similar tendencies have always portrayed the judiciary in the most absurd way as a facilitator of the rich and an, an, an impediment to the poor. Your worships, we are all really about to stamp out this apparent criminalization of poverty from our court system. This begins with you as an individual and must extend magistrates, great one, and other staff under your supervision. In the end, you should have only your conscience to judge you as how you want to be branded, whether as a, as a thief or as a, an honest man or woman of justice. Now, the, the common, the, the common uh, complaint by the public, and I've seen many people coming to my chambers, saying, my Lord, I paid the money in the court, and uh, uh, I was acquitted. I went back to the same court, they are telling me my bail money is not there, the money is posted. When you ask them where, where, where is the, the receipt, he says, no, I, I, I actually 
pay the land money to the magistrate. So you give cash bail on, on record it is non-cash and you are paid the cash personally. What kind of criminal would that be? Now you remember when, when, you, when you were swearing and I asked you a question. You imagine in the morning you have received that money and in the afternoon you have the audacity to convict the thief. When you should be the one to be convicted in that afternoon. So at the end of the day, what does your conscience tell you? You imagine, do you go, do you go home saying, ha, ah, what a thief I am? <laughs> Maybe a smart thief. You know? So actually, in, in one of the one of the courts, when, you know, I missed the little court in this country, so I know what I'm talking about. I think I went, I went to one of the areas where the, the, the people were complaining that, you know, here, in order for you to get paid, that the magistrate meets with the state attorney and the, the police. So they agree on how much you should pay and they share. Can you imagine joint criminality with the state actors. So I hope, I hope among you there is no such a criminal. If you are not criminal, start thinking of exit because the door is still open. By, by what you have vastly you are spread across the country, you will interact with a wide range of people, all with different backgrounds and social settings, majority of whom will come seeking judicial services. They may be in the category of litigants, lawyers, witnesses, members of the public ETC. The manner in which we interact and deal with them on a daily basis we will the lasting image not only on you as a judicial officer, but on the perception of the judiciary as a whole. I'm glad that the training program has a topic specifically tailored to communication and customer care. Customer care is one of the areas where judicial officers and other staff of the judiciary have performed poorly for a long time. You must therefore be the change. Take whatever you learn seriously and you can get it in your staff at your respective stations. You know, the, the, the previous the, the previous judicial officer, the old judicial officer, was the type who was an eligible. Uh, actually, I remember when we, were, when we were just coming to, to serve as judicial officers, a judge was not supposed to be looking up when he's walking through the corridor. So you would work looking down, and you're not supposed to smile, and then the bodyguards would be there in your, your past, so you're not supposed to interact with the public. That has long changed. That is why we have the DCC. That's why we have the RCC to, co to coordinate with the public. Now, customer care is very critical because you see, we are paid because the public comes to us. You imagine if everyone in the country decided not to find a case, you would be the point. You are employed because people come to our courts to file cases. Now that customer care is very critical. Make sure that the public does not suffer at your hands. Now let me give you examples. And, and this I will be In Barara, I went there and found there, there was a, a his daughter, she was, a, uh, her title was a, uh, Who are these who serve here? What is the title? Officer Tender. Officer Tender. Yes, she was an officer Tender. And then she was given some role of uh, a clerk. And then she became a problem. I then find a person for letters of administration before the registration, because she was employed in the office of the deputy registration. She was charging 50,000. Seeing letters of administration, 100,000. So, as, as my method of work for me when I'm at the station and not confine myself in my chambers, I walk around. I must know what happens in every office in my jurisdiction. 
So eventually, of course, I, I got to know. And then I was told that she's untouchable because she's connected. I said, what? You can have a group in my court and then the claim is that the person is connected? So I came to Kampara by then. I think the red coverage people was our, our peers. I came with the, a date of transfer. And when I transferred her, now people flocked in my office demanding for the money they had paid. What would they have paid is the other So I called her and unfortunately, you know, these things were wrong. You are what an honesty has. If I had just the slightest evidence, she would never have gone home. But unfortunately, this was saying, I told her 300,000, I forced her to clear all that money. That's the only punishment I could give. And then it chased her away. But you can imagine the criminality that goes on in our, in our, in our courts, under our watch, because sometimes when you don't go, in these offices, you don't know that actually those things are happening. I also adopted another way where, you know, I will be coming in the morning. You find people are sitting under the trees of the country. I would say this has been one of the biggest challenges we face. I remember one time I was coming from, from Morocco with the chief registrar. And the, the chief registrar, usually when we travel, we, 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 we do surprise visits. So the chief, the chief register left actually ahead of me and said, okay, let me go and visit the court in Qatar. She arrived at the court, this was midday. There was no one, not even a crack. Not even a crack. I went to Amorata and I found the judicial officer had been away from the station, even court works were on his chair. The best evidence is God waves. By the time, uh, you know, when it comes that the design is on your chair, the spider, design is on your chair. And to make matters worse, he had left the keys with a cleaner and a seat at all these chambers. No, no crack, nothing. Even the road, the, the road going to the chambers, you could see. Then there was no activity. The grass was growing towards the center. <laughs> and then when I asked, you know, the, the, the Rossi Fab chairman, when they come there, I said, no. This kid shop only comes once a month. But now we have a method of knowing whether you are attending or not. I will be calling you on WhatsApp and say, ah, show me the front of your, <laughs> of your coat. And then I will see where you run. <laughs> if you start saying, ah, my WhatsApp is not working, then I will run out there. <laughs> Some of you, Monday is for traveling back to, to, to the station. Friday is for coming back. Thursday, some of you will return on Thursday. So you work <coughs> Tuesday and Wednesday. What type of judicial officer would that be? That is also a theft. You are still in time. Okay. Make no mistake, suppose that what you say and do in the comfort of your privacy is of no interest to the position you command. Sometimes the contact law of a private nature may reveal uh, there, there are also values. Now, I, 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 there was a, there is a, a famous interesting case of a Portuguese judge. He was telling me, he had a girlfriend, and he was telling her that he's not married. So the girl was hopeful that he was going to marry her. And then the, all of a sudden, she was walking on the street and then met the other judge with his wife. And then the, 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 a neighbor who was walking by said, Oh, yes, my God, and this is. The girl from the court alone had slapped the judge, slapped the other woman. <laughs> so he was taken for disciplinary. And these are the words the, the disciplinary committee said that a judge is expected to guide his or her office and personal life with integrity. Society expects that a judicial officer puts his or her office and professional duties above his or her own personal interest. To do that, a judge's conduct 
both in his professional and personal and family life, must display intellectual step, superior respect and observance of the law, prudent management of financial affairs, diligence and care in discharge of judicial duties and discretion in personal relationships, social contracts and activities. That does not mean that when it comes to his or her personal and family life, the judge cannot maintain family responsibilities, friendships, or engage in social activities. But judicial officers must accept that the nature of their office puts them under considerable scrutiny and improves and imposes constraints on their behaviors and conducts, which other offices or professionals do not impose. He or she must avoid all situations which might reasonably reduce the respect and the confidence that the community has in, in regard to courts and the judicial system, as well as situations that might reduce the respect in the judicial office or cast doubt upon judges' impartiality. The judge must prevent all situations which might expose him or her to charges of hypocrisy, youth conducts, or acts of their private and family life. Now let me tell you, I was in South Africa attending a training, and then there was a judge in Malawi who told me, and this is a true story he told me, that he used to like going to dance before he was appointed to the shops. So when he was appointed to the shops, he became so bored. And one time he decided that he wants to go for dancing. So he bought a safari every week. <laughs> and then some night goggles. And he bought jeans. And you know, the way the safarians walk. So he was bouncing <laughs> to the discotheque. So when he was at the discotheque, a fight broke out. <laughs> So they started punching each other and then in the, in the ensuring uh, confusion and he doesn't know how someone pulled off his you know, safari <laughs> and he ran out of who he told me that if he met any obstacle on the way he would be a dead man that was the last time he attempted to go to this <laughs> so, so now you see what we do in our private life unfortunately these are restrictions that are imposed on us. So I think it is for the good of the office to which part that we must be we must be given restraints on our on our part. These are these are unfortunate. But we, we have to undergo that. If you are there is a judicial officer actually the OC5 chairman recently called me. I'm not going to mention I, I I'm going to, to call the judicial officer. He's the chief magistrate. In the evening, he goes to drink from uh, the bar of a man lender who has three quarters of cases in his court. Oh. So, a little cut, and then he sits with the man lender on the same table where he served all sorts of drinks. Now, that's a disciplinary issue. If you want to drink, can you buy a beer and drink it from home? What, why must you go in a bar of a, a litigant in your court? I hope, I hope that the bar scenario speaks for itself and I need not give more examples. Let me call upon your worships to personally take charge and control of court proceedings and schedules. I've always given this example that during my criminalization inspection, I established situations where litigants and advocates sought adjournments at the will and for whom reasons, and some judicial officers granted them in adversarial cases and without exercising judicial discretion. What partly explains this is that the judicial officers are lesser themselves and in most cases they are perpetual absentees as such, such as undeserving attendants are a chance for them to slumber another extra day. In the end, we start to grapple with the background. I'm not expecting you to take that direction. There was a, a, a magistrate actually is on an addiction, a chief magistrate. I used that his uh, his uh, area with the chief register and we found all cases adjourned for almost like six months without a single year. All of them. Who was adjourning them? His clerk. So you imagine earning a salary his own prediction. You can ask the CR to give you those examples. So, you find the cases and the journey over and over again.
some, some of you as children are, are, are anxious to return mothers. Someone comes and says, My love, oh, your worship, I, I, today I'm unable to proceed because even before he finishes the because he says, Oh, it's okay. Which day, which day should we <laughs> which day should we give you? You are anxious because you think that will give you time to spend the whole day doing nothing. Okay. Let me encourage your worships not to fear complaints from God users as long as you have done your work diligently and professionally. Complaints are sometimes a natural consequence of the nature of the judicial work. This we know. And if our family defend you against malicious complaints, just the same way we will not escape. If family refer you to the disciplinary action for, for disciplinary action, you fall incredible for our practices. Now, the nature of your work, you are bound to receive complaints. Because for every decision you make, one person goes home laughing, another goes home crying. So expect complaints from you. So don't fear complaints. They are bound to come. They, they, those complaints are bound to come. The people will complain. Actually, there is one who wrote a complaint recently and said that to even make matters worse that the magistrate had received the brain. When he was reading the judgment, he was smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so he was saying the magistrate received the bride because when he was reading the judgment he was smiling. It is like you are supposed to be crying when you are reading the judgment. <laughs> so so now, I, I received confidence in my chambers. Of course I don't 